Hi, I'm Lauren Larson, and today I will be doing a persuasive speech on vaccines. This is my audience. Say vaccines. This right here is the sound of whooping cough. I'm going to pull up from the sounds of pertussis. According to Southeastern professor Dr. Sore Preston, in 2010, 10 infants died from this disease because of the lack of oxygen. An unvaccinated child had breathed on them. Today, Texas is currently fighting a whooping cough epidemic. Pertussis is a highly contagious bacterial disease that can be fatal to infants. Statistics from the sounds of pertussis state that 83% of deaths from pertussis occur in infants under three months old. Infants are unable to be vaccinated. Even some adults cannot be vaccinated for medical reasons. Vaccines are not only used to protect an individual from a disease, but also those that cannot receive a vaccine. We need to protect our new generations. To do this, our country needs to better initiate herd immunity. Today, I'll inform you all of what herd immunity is, refute the idea that vaccines cause autism, and list the benefits of becoming vaccinated. Today, people have become sluggish to continue herd immunity, believing that diseases are no longer a threat. Herd immunity creates the resistance to the spread of infectious disease in a group, and because susceptible members are few, transmission from an infected member is unlikely. This is an example of how herd immunity works from historyofvaccines.org. The blue symbols are going to be those people that are unvaccinated, the green will be of people that are vaccinated, and the red will be the spread of the disease. So this is with no herd immunity. You can see the disease spreads to almost every unvaccinated person. This is an example of a strong herd immunity. And the disease doesn't break through the group. And lastly, this is an example of a weak herd immunity where the disease actually breaks through the group because there are holes in it. Those that are unable to be vaccinated are dependent on the herd. If a large group of people are mostly vaccinated, there can be no link in the chain and therefore disease cannot break through. It only takes one group of people that are unvaccinated to cause an outbreak. If this happens, it is the newborns and other individuals who suffer. Vaccine effectiveness is highly dependent on herd immunity. Basically, the herd is a protective shield, a human shield, designed to protect those that cannot receive vaccines. Because herd immunity is weak today, there has been a recent outbreak of measles. Health officials have seen an increase in this as well and blamed anti-vaccine beliefs. I have three maps from the past three years of certain disease outbreaks. This is from 2011. The green is whooping cough and the reddish color is measles. This is 2012. As you can see, there's a larger outbreak of whooping cough. In 2013, this year, there are still measles. The herd immunity has become weak because of anti-vaccine believers. Some celebrities discourage vaccinations. Jenny McCarthy is a model and small-time actress. Her son was diagnosed with autism. McCarthy blames vaccines, especially the MMR vaccine, for her son's diagnosis after he received it. After much scientific research, no connection has been found between vaccines and autism. And this website pretty much sums it up. This has been the number of links between vaccines and autism, the number of preventable illnesses, and the number of preventable deaths. There appears to be an increase in autism because of advances in medicine. The primary scientific reason for the increase in autism diagnosis is due to more disorders being included in the autistic spectrum and doctors getting better at diagnosing their characteristics. With autism not a true threat toward vaccines, people should be more open to receiving them. The main benefit of vaccinations is being able to protect your child from getting dangerously sick. 
I'm sure that many of us also do not want to be the reason for another person's illness. In the old days, people didn't have the luxury of vaccines. Many children died before the age of five. Today, children don't need to experience the illnesses that others did long ago. Also, even if you do get over a disease, they still have long-term effects, such as the measles. They can cause sterilization. In conclusion, vaccines are the best choice for a healthy child that we would like to keep healthy. We need to strengthen the human shield and herd immunity. We need to protect our future generations. Get vaccinated today. Don't deny your health and the health of others.